UAV forecast says it's good to fly. Here's a little tip. Just click on the number and now you can adjust the threshold. Mavic Air 2 flyers. Controller and DJI fly app deep dive. Are you ready? Let's get started. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Now that's a shot. This little wheel right here is so you can look down and so you can look up. All right, this little uh, function button here is programmable. I'll show you how to program it, but take a look at my screen. What happens when I, when I hit the when I hit the button? Pat the camera looks down. When I hit it again, pat camera looks up. Um, this is return to home as well as pause. You just hit tap this to pause the drone. If it's doing any kind of autom autonomous work and you just want to pause, you just tap this button. Press and hold it for a few seconds. Go home. And well, you've seen it for yourself. I just tapped it to take it out of pause it out of go home so that it stays where it is. Press this button. Look, it goes from white to red, from red to white. So you can use that to select between photo and video mode. See, there you go. And then you can use this to trigger. It's going to take a photo. So this basically is your trigger button, uh, depending on whether you're in photo or video mode, that's going to trigger to start and stop, take a photograph or start and stop to take a video. So that covers the remote control. If you want to see how to set up and do your basic safety procedures before you take your first flight, check out this video here. Absolute must watch teaches you the hang of the sticks, how to calibrate your compass, all that good stuff. Check out the link right here. Once you've done that, then yeah, you're on your first flight. Let's run through the app. Now, so let's start with the top left at the top left where it says normal mode in flight we're going to go to hit tap in flight and that basically basically tells you your flight status is normal that's a good thing my return to home altitude is 400 feet because this bridge is pretty tall and generally the higher you are the safer you are thank goodness this drone has sensors and we'll talk more about that in a bit maximum altitude is 400 feet that's here in the u.s other countries might differ so if you're in the u.s 400 feet if you're in another country check with your rules distance no distance limit no limit for me because i don't like to be limited but you can slide this bar and limit your distance if you don't feel comfortable comfortable flying far that's pretty cool you can switch to internal memory just by the tap of a button or switch back to SD card to be uh, to choose which card you want to record your videos and photos on um, you can hit a button the blue button there that says format right above the SD card I won't hit that because I've got information there and I'm not gonna format that right now okay so that's pretty much it you know it tells you recording time how much time you have to record on the SD card and if you switch to internal storage it shows you how much time so let's move across to the right we have uh, if you touch any one of those gauges up there I get a battery uh, temperature which is consistent across the board you want all three cells in the battery to have the same um, voltage roughly which is good and it gives you your flight time on the controller I probably forgot to mention that earlier but you have sports mode to the right you have normal mode to the middle and you have tripod to the left tripod basically slows down all of your movement so everything the drone does really makes it super slow that's good for beginners to fly in as well and to get some nice slow steady shots and photos normal mode is just what you'll normally fly in and sports mode is what you'll do when you want to book it this drone can book it now when you go in sports mode look I'm in normal look at my sensors red at the top when I go to sports mode the sensors get red when I go to normal they go away when I go back to sports mode they get red again because sports mode gives you no protection you can literally fly into anything and wreck and then when I go back to normal mode, it comes off. So that's uh, worth noting. I've got 17 satellites, which is great. Anything above 10 satellites, 11 is usually good for takeoff and hovering. Next is my, uh, what I would like, what looks like a Wi-Fi signal there. That's my OcuSync strength. 
AccuSync is a beast. It is the strongest of strongest signal on pretty much any consumer drone out there. And my signal is strong and I have no doubt that it will last very long. Now you have these three dots at the extreme right there. When you tap on those three dots, that takes you into the main control. First and foremost, safety. Again, you'll find your maximum altitude, you'll find your maximum distance, you'll find your return to home altitude, which we already set. Um, you can update your home point by pressing there, um, selecting the point, uh, just tapping and selecting OK, and that will update your home point. I do not want to change my home point. I will leave it just the way it is, so I'll hit cancel. Also, if you hit that little controller icon, you can update the home point to the controller. So I will hit cancel right there. I'm fine with my home point and I'll go back to the three dots. So that's your home point. Next, you have obstacle detection. You can turn that on and off. That's basically determines whether the drone will detect any objects in front of it and behind it and stop. And right below it is advanced piloting system. But when you have that advanced piloting system on, it won't stop when it sees an object. It will go around the object as long as you keep pushing forward on your sticks. Pretty cool feature. It does take a little more battery life, so be aware of that. You have your compass here, which you should calibrate. I covered that in the video before this, so go check it out. I am used normal, so that's fine. That's pretty good. That's what you want. Um, this is your auxiliary light. That's the light at the bottom of the drone that comes on to check where it's landing uh, at night or in low light. You can turn that on or off or leave it on auto so it auto detects when the light's low and turns on when needed. So I leave that on auto. Lock GeoZone, this is kind of a new feature here. I've never used it yet. I will check it out and let you know more about that. Uh, remote identification, this is something that's coming in 2021. As you can see, DJI ahead of the curb, they have it set up. It's not something we need right now, but we probably will need it next year. It's good to know that the drone has it. it will talk more about that next year um, just be aware outside of DJI drones other drones really don't have this capability at least not yet whether it's a software thing or hardware thing I don't know but we'll see next year advanced uh, safety settings you go in here if your signal is lost obviously you want it to return home if you're flying outdoors descend I do not ever want it to descend because you might lose signal over water or far away and it might descend in somewhere you don't like so I don't recommend that at all I would say if you're flying indoors go to hover so if you lose signal it just stays right there till you go closer to the drone and you regain back signal and if you're outdoors flying keep it on return to home so that way it comes back home safely uh, emergency propeller stop you should leave it on emergency only because anytime you do this sequence of sticks down and in it will terminate the motors and the drone will fall out of the sky if you click on any time so use with caution really air sense you can toggle that on and off at least if you're in the uh, the US if you're in the UK you cannot basically what this does it's a receiver so it receives a signal from other manned aircrafts like helicopters and planes and anything within your neighborhood hood that's flying and it alerts you as you can see I'm getting a, a manned uh, aircraft signal that's the ADSB if I look on my map it should show me exactly how far it is from me it's there it is it's passing it's passing it's passing BAM there you go I can open up my maps I actually hear the plane you, you could see look it's passing it's passing it's passing it's gone the plane has passed me so that's pretty cool but it does not transmit anything back to the aircraft or anywhere else it's just a receiver and it's there for your safety please turn it on if you're in the US you will absolutely be grateful that you have this this is something that I've been hoping for and even hope that they do it to sense other drones because the sky is getting more congested more and more people are flying drones and I would like to know if there's another drone nearby me so that way I don't collide with that either great let's talk about the next section which is control we finished safety let's go over the control now units for your aircraft you can have meters kilometers and in my case Imperial which is feet the gimbal has follow mode it has FPV it comes default in follow mode look what happens if you go to FPV I'll show you right now I go right look what happens to the whole screen I go left <laughs> all right so that's FPV mode that's if you want kind of a racing effect um, I like follow mode so that's much better you get nice smooth cinematic shots which we're gonna talk about in an upcoming video upward gimbal rotation basically I'll turn that off right and I'll turn this wheel and I'll show you look I'm turning my wheel right now down up down 
up that's as far up as it will go to the zero but when I go back now and I toggle this on to gimbal upward gimbal rotation now my gimbal can look up there you go so I get an extra look up when I hit the wheel uh, gimbal calibration you can do automatic calibration or manual calibration manual calibration if it's a little twisted and you're up in the air you can tap 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 a button and level it out if you're doing any kind of professional work and you just need that perfection that little tweak it's good to know that they have that feature in there for you automatic is something you do if you're on the ground you start the drone up and you see that the camera is twisted you just do an auto calibration and that will fix that for you stick more Mode, I have it on mode 2 there are different modes that will get, allow each stick to do a different uh, maneuver um, set it up whatever works best for you but mode 2 is usually the standard mode and there's even a custom mode where you can program it so that's pretty awesome this part I really like the button customization now this particular button right here the function button that's in the top left that can be tuned basically or programmed to whatever you want so you can program it two ways one when you single tap one tap and look the gimbal looks down one tap and it looks back up and a double tap will turn on the auxiliary light that overrides the automatic feature that was set in the menu before and allows you to toggle it on and off uh, manually blue button at the bottom 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 of course in the control section is to repair the aircraft just in case the aircraft came from the factory and it wasn't paired to the controller press that pair button to activate the pairing feature next is the camera guys and and this is pretty cool you can choose between MOV and MP4 most people with um, Apple products usually use MOV most people with PC use MP4 for color you can choose between normal and decent alike decent alike look at the image it looks kind of uh it doesn't like that punch in it but what what it does because it's not recording the color it's recording more information and then you can add the color later and that gives you more flexibility and more strength to push the colors and to get more colors without destroying the image so that's kind of like for a semi-professional intermediate kind of work if not just put it on normal it's fine it's green it's luscious the camera takes great uh, videos and photos right out so that's fine your codec is h264 h265 if you're not familiar with that then you probably want to leave it on h264 basically just to give you a quick synopsis h265 is a denser stronger codec it definitely requires more processing power on your computer so bear that in mind if you're going to go to h265 anti flickers the refresh rate just leave it on automatic um, i haven't had a problem the way it refreshes the video feed that's on your uh, on your screen video subtitles i always leave that on your histogram you turn that on look what happens you can move around this little guy on the screen your histogram and that basically tells you if your darks are crushed or if your 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 highlights are blown out that's more for like semi-professional to professional use if you don't know what a histogram is then you don't have to stress about it just turn it off camera does a great job by itself auto sync HD photos if you take HD photos it will automatically uh, sync it to your phone so that's pretty useful and something that you want these grids here will put lines as you can see I have the third grid on which is just a cross can you see that cross in the middle of my screen look I'll lower the uh, image I see that cross white cross in the middle of the screen that's what that is right um, you can use grid lines if you want that's for the rule of thirds great for photographers and videography as well and then you have the hex lines and then guess what you can leave all three on so I've got the cross I've got the hex lines and the rule of thirds uh, grid um, but for me when I'm flying I don't like too much confusion but I definitely like to see my center point but you have options right whichever one works for you uh, white balance I usually leave in auto unless I'm filming like um, some professional work and this is nice you can toggle it on the screen and adjust it that's really really cute or you want warmer tones it's up to you what you want and then you set it to whatever you want I leave it on auto for basic filming record cache uh, this is something that a lot of people have been asking for they want the ability to take that off I personally leave it on because if you crash your drone you can't find your drone you need to prove that it wasn't your fault that cache recording might be on your phone if you turn it on it's low quality you can select how much storage you want to allocate for that or just leave it on auto or little storage or turn it off and then you have reset camera parameters that basically puts the camera back to default that I won't do because I like my settings the way I like it but if you're ever messing around you you figured you mess anything up you just hit reset camera parameters and everything goes back to default on the camera all right transmission now hd is 1080p 
when you look at your phone you're seeing a 1080p stream that's coming from your drone to your phone which is amazing but if you're flying in an area with tons of interference then and only then you might want to switch it to smooth and it drops the resolution probably to about 720 so that way it's less taxing on the communication between the drone and the controller 720 is still a good image but you can leave it on HD if you want frequency you can toggle between 2.4 or 5.8 or just leave it on dual band and the controller will do it automatically when it senses interference or you can manually do it I leave it on auto because OcuSync is is a boss there's no need for me to select anything manually but it's good to know that you can do it if you want about name your aircraft I'm going to name it how about that for a name here we go there's your name you put your name in there you save it it tells you the model it tells you your aircraft firmware um, you can check for updates preferably not when you're flying but just tap that blue button and you can check for updates it tells you the firmware of the uh, RC it tells you the fly safe database firmware that means it, uh, it updates the maps uh, where you can fly where you can't fly and make sure that everything is up to date with the regulations of your city or area so you want to make sure that's up to date so you know where safe and where's not safe to fly you can always hit that blue button and update it not when you're flying of course uh, it tells you the, the the fly safe database number so you can check that firmware number if you want manually and see if you're up to date or not it tells you the a version of your app it tells you the amount of times the battery's been charged it tells you the uh, serial number and flight controller number serial number remote control camera serial number serial number for everything they everything is logged in here I don't even know why I'm showing you that that pretty much sums up the menus that you'll find on the three dots when you click on it so it's not something that you'll use all the time uh, the bottom middle that's the home button you can when you tap it you have an option to land or return home you choose press and hold which one and that's what it will do so that's pretty good all you have to do is tap it this here is your map um, you just tap on the little icon to bring up the map and then there's arrows there that you can bring it back small tap on the icon and then if you tap on the map it takes over pretty much the entire screen almost here gives you a breakdown of the zones and stuff like that guys look for this DJI fly app I did it with the Mavic mini but it's the same app click this link right here and check out this video this will explain the entire airspace authorization i even went from authorization zone to authorization zone show you how the drone reacts and stuff like that so check out that video if you're interested to know where you can fly and where you can't fly and how to read these maps and authorization here tells you your home point or the drone's home point this shows you where north is it's um this here is if you want different layers, you want a satellite view, you want a standard view, you want a mixed view. I just usually use a standard view. I don't need the whole satellite thing. Um, what else? This here, when you see these circles around the plane, it tells you if it's medium, low, high risk. The blue triangle is where the drone is. So that shows you where the drone is. And the tip of the, the triangle shows you the, the direction in which the drone is pointing. And the little blue circle, that's me. That's the home point. The little orange circle with the H, that's the home point that's where I am I'm not far from the home point so that's pretty cool that's the map in a nutshell that's basically what you're gonna be using the maps for click back on the photo video and that takes you off the map click on these little arrows right here and that closes the map up for you to the left bottom you have your H is height how high the drone is D is distance how far the drone is from you and uh, that pretty much covers that section now you see that uh, little triangle in the half circle that tells me which direction my drone is pointed and the circle with the little radiation that's coming out from the circle tells me which way my antenna is optimally positioned so look at me I'll move my hand around and look what happens to it see so that tells me which direction now my antenna is radiating perfectly towards the drone and the tip of the triangle tells me which direction the drone is pointed so if I spin the drone around you see my screen now I'm pointed towards me that's optimal range or uh, back or at least like I like to say the butt of the drone is facing away from me. and you always want to keep your antennas pitched towards your optimal position now this doesn't work that well when the drone is close to you but as the drone gets further it starts giving you a more accurate reading so this is a pretty useful tool to help you get back home just in case you don't know your way back home point the tip of the triangle 
towards the circle which is you and keep it pointed towards your circle you see I don't want the radiation away from the drone I want the radiation pointed at the drone and I just push forward on the right stick to move forward and that will help me go back home beautiful tool very useful highly recommended next to your right you have your EV which is your exposure value and your EV lock now your exposure value you just tap on that and you scroll up to brighten up the image and you scroll down to darken up the image if the image is too dark ideally you want to be at zero but sometimes zero is not bright enough or sometimes uh, zero is not dark enough so it all depends but you have the flexibility to just toggle up if you want it a little brighter or toggle down you know play with it and have some fun and that makes the camera very simple and easy to use now next to that you have exposure uh, auto exposure lock when you hit that button now and you lock it it stays locked at that value so no matter what direction you turn it will not change the internal settings of the camera versus if I take this off you see you see how the screen went from 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 dark to bright so look if I put it at dark and I and I lock it <clears throat> I move it over here to a brighter area it stays dark but when I unlock it it brightens up the image if you do not lock your exposure your 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 camera will constantly be making internal adjustments to make sure that your image is perfectly exposed now we're talking manual settings you see this little camera icon at the bottom right that says auto when you click on that then it changes to manual and these are the things that the camera plays with when you're toggling between EV plus and minus the camera is messing with these values internally which are I'll switch to manual shutter speed and um, ISO this is your shutter over here you can adjust your shutter check out this video link and learn how to use the camera manually it's not something I'll deep dive into but hey at least you know the manual settings are there whenever you're ready uh, you can always drop it in auto leave your exposure at zero and just brighten it up and darken it up as you so choose by going plus and minus that's it you can lock your exposure and keep the image from constantly changing from bright to dark and to hold one constant lock on the camera so that it doesn't deviate just above that you have the play button when you hit that play button now you can toggle on your menu between all means all the photos and videos that you took will be displayed here you can click and you get just videos alone you click over here you get just photos alone depending on what you're looking to browse through and then you have a favorite section you can mark your photos and videos and call them favorite just by hitting this little heart over there and then it goes over to the favorite section over there and then when you click on a photo or on a video per se let's click on this video right here that's not downloaded of course you've got to download the video to your phone i did an entire video I'll leave a link here that shows you how to download the videos how to edit the videos how to use the dji fly app the same app that you're flying with to edit all of your videos so check that link right here guys if that's something you're interested in editing on the go so that's pretty much it you can download just click that little download button at the top bottom left there with the arrow that's the download right next to it is the delete button I don't know why they put it so close at the top right there's a heart you can hit that to add it to the favorites or you can uh, hit the uh, triangle with the, the square with the triangle going up and that's to share it next lets you have the record button it's red you just tap it to record if you want you can use your screen you don't have to use the controller button and you tap it to stop and then right above that you have the menu now this is where things get interesting let's start from the right where it says video you can toggle between photo and video on your uh, phone so that's good just by tapping it you can jump straight into the quick shots which is a separate video it has all the rocket the circle the helix basically all the good stuff the boomerang the ash Destroyed, all the good stuff that the Mavic Mini has had as well this is some autonomous quick shots where you just tap a few buttons and the drone does all the work for you I'll make a separate video about that if you're interested let me know in the comment section you can also do hyperlapses 8k hyperlapses I mean this goes on with more and more features it has panoramic shots right you can do panoramic shots I mean the menu is pretty pretty in-depth here and it's at your fingertips right on your screen which is very handy very easy
easy and simple to use you can do vertical panels so if you want to do an instagram shot or something like that it will stitch uh the photos together and give you um uh what you call it a portrait kind of a shot as opposed to the wide view that you normally get then you can get a wide angle and then you can get an ultra wide angle 180 degree then you can get the spherical shot which is like a 360 degree i mean this thing has got tons of features that you can play with just by the tap of a button and the drone does it for you and you have the 8k hyperlapse here that you can do it you can do it freely you can do it while it makes a circle you can do it while it locks the course and stays the line you can do it on a, on a, on a waypoint mode where you set the waypoints where you want it to go you just pin those points on the map the drone goes there and takes the hyperlapse for you i mean there's so much to play around with on this drone that is so much fun. And then of course you have regular video mode and then you, which is normal. And then you have HDR video, which is high dynamic range. So when you jump into HDR, it kind of like tries to keep the bottom where the water is and the bridges bright as well without getting the sky too bright so it gives you a nice mix you can get that in up to 4k 30 which is awesome and then you have slow motion video which is slow frame rates slow frame rates give you slow motion you can get 120 frames per second 240 frames per second i can do a separate video just let me know what you're interested in learning um, most of you guys will probably film in hdr if you're new just drop it in hdr and you get nice perfectly balanced shots um, it doesn't allow you to control the exposure in hdr or it doesn't allow you to lock the exposure it does all that work for you and of course you can do 4k you can do 2.7k and 1080p so it doesn't matter if you have a slow computer or you have a gaming pc or a fast pc that can handle video editing you can do all of these things in multiple frame rates 4k even goes all the way up to 60 frames a second which means it takes 60 photographs every second to make a video and that's what gives you nice buttery smooth video just in case you're looking at that in the high quality it's available in this camera which is awesome coming from from video now we switch to photo you can take one single shot by the tap of a button there you go you can take a 48 megapixel shot which is high definition shot that you can punch in or zoom in on and you'll get a uh, bet you won't lose much quality because it's a high quality photo so it does that as well then there's smart shot one thing worth mentioning about the 48 megapixel shot is that it does back out a little bit if you look at the regular shots like in single shot you see how closer up the camera is it's a wider field of view as well so just be aware of that when you go into the 48 megapixel the smart shot is using the camera's algorithm to kind of figure out what's the best look for you so if you're not sure you're a beginner and you just want good shots you can try out smart shot and let the camera decide what's best for you right auto exposure bracketing uh, you have up to three and five stops of exposure values um, if you don't know what auto exposure bracketing is it's a more of a professional tool where uh, photographers will take multiple photos and, and layer them on top of each other and that helps to bring out more range in the dark areas and the light areas um, this is something you have to do on your computer most likely at home if you guys want me to do a video on auto exposure bracketing as well just let me know and of course you have burst mode where you can take multiple shots up to seven shots at a time you know have this camera firing away bam look at that multiple shots right i mean it's uh, this is amazing right and then you have a time shot as well where you can set how often while you're flying every two seconds just hit this every two seconds one two the camera will automatically take photos for you so you don't have to worry about snapping the photos as well so that's pretty cool this is a feature a lot of people used back in the days when they wanted time lapse shot guys this drone is the bomb and the best value for money right now in my opinion all right with that being said guys i hope this video was helpful i've got to come back home because i've only got 12 percent battery Let me know in the comment section what videos you want me to make, specifically more DJI Mavic uh, mini videos coming too as well. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Make sure you leave me a thumbs up and um, I'll catch you guys whenever I can. Big shout out to Autonomous Drone Services and MadMixTube.com for providing us with the equipment to make these videos.
possible. I'm still giving away six DJI Mavic 2 Pros or Zooms. Head over to my Patreon account, donate a dollar, become a patron, and automatically you're entered to win a chance to win one of six of those drones. Guys, let's make this happen. Come on, support me and help me support you.